Hey, what is up guys? This is Nishi from MST.TV here back with another Market Watch episode. So we are right in the middle of a tier zero format with Ishizu tier limits being much better than every other deck in the game by quite a wide margin. Unfortunately, this means that there isn't too much influence on the market from the competitive scene because it does feel like most of the Ishizu tier decks that you see running around all look like 95% the same. However, what we can do is pay attention to decks that some people are looking at as fun decks or maybe decks that could be viable once the tier zero decks are eventually hit on an upcoming ban list. A lot of decks in the game right now are right on the edge of being good. They might take the occasional regional or YCS top and they might do really well at your locals depending on how competitive your scene is, but they'll go under the radar until after this upcoming ban list. Those decks are still definitely things to pay attention to, and we're going to highlight some of the notable cards to watch in today's video. Let's get started. Alright, so to kick things off, I think we have to take a look at a couple of cards that some decks can use to counter Ishizu Tealermans, and we're going to start with Bestial Druid's Worm. So we've already talked about how Magnemut is so good, and how the Bestials are a really strong engine to use against Ishizu Tealermans, as well as in Ishizu Tealermans for the Mirror Match, since these cards can function like hand traps that are also able to put bodies onto the board. Magnemut is the most notable one that people will first choose to max out on, since it can be helpful in searching out another bestial monster during the end phase for an additional interaction. This one, however, Druze Worm, is the next best one because if it goes from the field to the graveyard, you can target an opponent's special summon monster and then send that target to the graveyard as well. We are actually starting to see people choosing to run larger bestial packages in the main board, even at YCS Dortmund this past weekend, with some players choosing to max out and run a full 9 bestials in the main deck, 3 Magnemut, 3 Druze Worm, and 3 Serenir. So because of the popularity of Druze Worm and how much play it is currently seeing, Druze Worm is following the path of Magnemut and has started to move up in price. Druze Worm is currently an $8 to $10 super rare, which is right around where Magnemut was on the release of Darkwing Blast. Druze Worm was only a $2 to $3 card before, but this price spike definitely shows just how much competitive players are valuing the bestials and depend on them to see success against the current meta. If you're looking to play Yu-Gi-Oh at all this format, then Druze Worm, just like Magnemut, is a card you're going to need to pay up for as brand new super rares from the latest core set. Up next, this is a bit more of a dedicated side deck card for the Ishizu Tier Limit matchup. It is the end of Anubis. Now, this is a level 6 monster with 2500 attack points that has a very simple effect. While it is on the field, cards that either target a card in the graveyard or activate in the graveyard are negated. Super simple, this card is a very obvious answer to the Ishizu tier limit deck, which basically needs their graveyard live in order to function. It's not a perfect answer, since they can still use things like Heartbeat or Super Poly, or maybe go into some other extra deck monster in order to get rid of the end of Anubis, but it's still really annoying for them to have to deal with. I don't know if there's any, like, one specific deck that is using this card, but the two ways to abuse it that come to mind for me are Sprite using Mannequin Cat, or Labyrinth using their field spell to bring this out because this card is a fiend. Now interestingly enough, despite having four different printings, this card last came out back in 2010, so all of its printings are a bit pricey and difficult to find. For the original secret rares from Ancient Sanctuary, those are going to cost you around $50 to $60 for a near mint copy, and then for either a rare from Turbo Pack 4 or the Ultra Rare from the Lost Millennium Special Edition, those are going to cost you anywhere from $25 to $30 each. There is also a Dark Revelation 2 version, but there's just not very many copies of those on the market, so the price is definitely a bit high, overinflated, but do keep in mind that this is such an old card that finding an actual near mint copy is going to be a bit of a struggle. Overall, I don't think that this is like an amazing card, I think it's a good option if you want to try something because you're annoyed by a Shizu tier, but don't count on this card to win you all of your games because there are still outs to it. But if you're like me, and you have some older bulk lying around, this is probably a card that's worth digging up to offload because it is worth quite a few bucks right now. Since we're talking about shutting down the graveyard, it does also make sense, I suppose, to take a quick look at Soul Drain. This is yet another side deck card that can be used against Ishizu Tealermans with a very similar effect to the end of Anubis. By paying 1000 life points, you get a floodgate that prevents both players from activating the effects of monsters in their graveyards or that are banished. So. The idea here is basically the same thing as the end of Anubis, except that it's a trap card. So it isn't a body, but rather it's vulnerable to things like Cosmic Cyclone and Harpy's Feather Duster. 
still potentially really good, however, at what it's trying to do, which is prevent your opponent from using any graveyard effects in order to advance the game, which is basically all that Tier Limits tries to do. So Soul Drain was actually limited for quite a while, and during that time it didn't see any reprints, so I think that this card kind of fell under the radar for a lot of people, and despite having three printings, all of them are fairly expensive. The two holo versions are actually quite difficult to find. We have the Lost Art Ultra Rare and then the Super Rare from a relatively early Astral Pack. Either of those is going to cost you about $15 each, and then for the lowest rarity print we have the original Rare from back in Return of the Duelist a long time ago. Those are going to be about 10 It is a cool floodgate, and if you're also scared of Dark World, this card is a good side deck option against them as well, so it might just be worth taking note of. However, given how long this card has gone without an easily accessible reprint for a lot of the player base, I'd expect this card to be reprinted early in 2023. So if you guys have some extra copies that you don't need to use right now, you might want to offload them while they are a solid side deck option against a tier 0 strategy. Alright, so we're on to some of the more fun cards. Let's first take a look at Thunder Dragon Dark and Thunder Dragon Roar. So it has obviously been quite a while since Thunder Dragons have actually done anything. Obviously Colossus was the heart and soul of the deck, and with Colossus banned it feels kind of hard to put your finger on exactly what it is that Thunder Dragons want to do. However, with the release of the Bestials, the Thunder Dragon cards are much stronger now. It's now much easier to proc the effects of the Thunder Dragon monsters, and you can get multiple bodies onto the board faster as well. I believe that the deck actually made it to the top 32 at YCS Minnesota, which was, of course, after the release of Darkwing Blast, but before the release of the Ashizu cards in Magnificent Mavens. If the Ashizu cards were never released, is it possible that we'd be seeing Thunder Dragons topping more now thanks to the Bestial cards? I guess that how the game would look is anyone's guess, but it's definitely possible that the deck would be seeing the occasional top here and there, which would be really cool to see in 2022. Anyways, each of these cards is a 3 of if you are looking to play Thunder Dragons. I think Hawk is the one that they can cut to 1 or 2, but you're definitely playing 3 of each Roar and Dark. Even though the deck's not necessarily top tier right now, these cards are still worth noting because Thunder Dragons are a very popular deck with a lot of players, and they have fond memories of these cards, and they're going to want to try to build the deck once it's viable. Each of these cards has exactly the same two printings, the original Ultra Rare from Soul Fusion which is around $5 to $6, and then the Secret Rare Megaton reprint which is around $7 to $8. Personally, I think the Secrets look a lot nicer and cleaner than the Ultras, so if I were playing the deck those are the ones that I would be picking up, though I do know that some players do like having the original printings of the card. Either way, if you have interest in playing Thunder Dragons in the near future, I'd probably try to grab the core fairly soon since I think that the deck might pop up more after Ishizu tier limits are eventually hit on an upcoming ban list, and assuming that these cards don't get reprinted, I suspect that these will bounce back up in price shortly after. Next up we'll take a look at Sky Iris, so this is a field spell for Pendulum, specifically it interacts with Magicians, Performa Pals, and Odd Eyes cards. So for one, your opponent can't target those types of cards in your Pendulum zones with card effects, so it protects them from something like Cosmic Cyclone or Twin Twisters. Its other effect is that you can pop a face-up card you control to search your deck for an Odd Eyes card. The cool thing is that this card is now searchable in Pendulums with Majesty Pegasus, one of the new Draco Slayer cards from Darkwing Blast, and you can use this card to search out for Odd Eyes Revolution Dragon, who can then in turn tutor out a Dragon Pendulum monster from your deck. So a neat little bridge piece here, though I believe it is just played at 1 in the Pendulum deck, the build that made the top 16. At YCS, Dortmund only played one copy as well. Obviously, Pendulums aren't a top tier strategy at the moment, but they definitely could be top tier after Ishizu tier limits inevitably get hit on an upcoming list. For now, it is just the OTS tournament pack supers that are expensive. I remember picking these up for 50 cents to a dollar for quite a while. These have slowly moved up. Over the last couple of years, they were like a couple of bucks, and now they're right at around six to seven dollars a piece. Fortunately, the card does have two other common printings that you should still be able to grab for only a dollar or so. All right, so this is a weird one to look at. It is Amazonist Queen. So the Amazonist deck actually got quite a few new support cards in Darkwing Blast. They got a couple of boss monsters, a new normal summon, some scales, several new toys for them to play around with. Now, let's keep it real here. I don't think that anyone is saying that Amazonists are going to be meta-relevant anytime soon or that they'll be even like topping a regional. 
However, I think that if you are really, really good with a deck, you might be able to consistently not do horribly at your locals with them. Now, apparently, Dark Arm Duelist also posted a deck profile for the Amazonist strategy over on his channel. I took a look and look, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what the Amazonist cards do, but he made the deck seem pretty interesting. So while most of the deck is pretty cheap, Amazonist Queen is actually a card with very limited printings available. It was a super rare back in Duelist Revolution, I believe, and then a common in one of the OTS tournament packs as well. So not the most widely accessible card for a lot of players. This is just a one of, but with the rest of the deck so cheap and easy to put together, players were bound to try and make something spike in price, and I guess Queen is just going to be that card. Right now, for the original supers, you're looking at around $20 each for a near copy. The crazy thing to me is that the commons from the OTS tournament pack are technically like $15 each on TCG player right now, which is a lot for any OTS tournament pack common, let alone an Amazonist card. If you can, definitely dig this card up out of your bulk and offload them, even if you have to take like 10, 8, maybe even $5 for this card just to move it. I think I would go ahead and get rid of them if you can because I don't see the demand for this card sticking around for very long. The final card is one that I think is really awesome, a card that I think has been underrated ever since its release. Vernus Alpha of the Flourishing Hills. Now this card is an ultra rare from Power of the Elements where you can discard this card and then a monster or Vernus Elf card and then search for a Vernus Elf card and you can also special summon any earth monster from your graveyard but you're locked into the effects of earth monsters for the rest of the turn. Now I remember when this card was first revealed over in the OCG, I thought that this card was kind of crazy, it was only going to be a matter of time before someone found a way to abuse it, and I guess that's kind of true, the card started popping up in Naturalis, and I think even Medolce made an appearance this past weekend running this card. It's just been completely overshadowed this format by the Ishizu Tierlemon deck. Flourishing Hills used to be a dollar card, but recently it has trended upwards and is now sitting at the $5 to $6 range, but the card's ascent has been quiet. I haven't really seen too many people talking about this card, except for when people are talking about using it themselves in one of those aforementioned strategies. I have this card as a hold right now, although obviously a lot depends on just how the game develops over the next year. If we see Ishizu Tier Limits get slaughtered, and then we have a diverse format going into next year, then yeah, I could see this card actually continuing to go up, as there would now be room for it in the format. However, if the format continues to be dominated by Ishizu Tier, and then eventually we go back to just a Sprite Tier Limit format, then maybe this card will be stuck just being like a good card for a not good enough deck. Either way, definitely make note of this card, and if you can pick it up still for 2 to $3 each, I think that's a safe price to buy it at, just in case the card does become a key card for a top tier strategy. Okay guys, that is it for today's episode. Personally, I'm not really a big fan of tier 0 formats. They kind of feel stale, and I'm really hoping to see some changes soon. That being said, there's definitely going to be a lot of interesting things happening going into next year. A lot of different decks that have a lot of potential. I can't imagine that they'll let Ishizu tier be this good for this long, so theoretically, we'll see the deck addressed in the not too distant future, and you guys will definitely want to be prepared for when that hits. Anyways guys, if you did enjoy today's Market Watch episode, please make sure that you let me know by slamming that thumbs up button for me. Also, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think about the cards that we talked about today and what other cards are currently trending on the market. Also, if you haven't already, do make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button to get all of the latest and greatest content from both Tombox and myself. And until next time, guys, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.